So the Forsaken are technically doomed. Sylvanas, while evil, was constantly pumping up their numbers and despite them getting new leaders and establishing themselves as new Lordaeron, they're literally destined for extinction in the very near future. However, based on the new lore from the Alpha, that might soon actually start changing. They're led by the first ever light undead Kelly Manatil and we didn't even know light could even create undead, but even more interestingly, we had just determined a ton of new light forged undead in Kazaka, completely unrelated to Kelly Manatil. And no, not just one savior light character, but very likely a fully fledged army of light undead created with a new method. The regular undead that we're all familiar with was always a thing of misery, a punishment, but this new light undead might be a second chance and something someone might actually want to take willingly. This could mean that the Forsaken could get a huge influx of new members soon, but not the old Scourge and Savannah's Forsaken, but new ones created by this new light method. Are the Forsaken evolving? Actually playing while on your phone is possible with Austin, this video is sponsored. You can not only check in on your characters, but you can do things like pet battles and even fully play the game. Austin allows you to control the computer through your phone completely free, available for Windows, iOS and Android. It's super easy to use, check out the link in the description, download the PC and the phone app and just simply connect it. The free version is great and you can control a desktop, transfer files and such, but the real deal is the game version with custom keyboards for various games other than just WoW and you can enjoy AFK games gaming at any time, anywhere with sound. Make sure to use my code ORON to get 7 days completely free only for the first 200 people. They also got a smart lock to turn off your PC at any time, as well as hot sales with up to 40% off on pro and game versions. Check out Awesome! So these new datamine models from the Alpha are seriously some of the most important lore that has completely gone under the radar. We had discovered this about a day or two after the Alpha build was first online, but so far we are getting into the war within beta and we had still not seen who these guys are exactly. However, the implications of this are actually massive as it completely redefines really undeath as it is and it might just be the future of the actual playable race. Technically looking at Forsaken are one of the weirdest races currently in the game. I mean, originally they were a faction for themselves and they split away from the Scourge, then they joined the Horde and they have literally just been Sylvanas' followers that really has been their entire thing. I mean, the entire ordeal was that we are forsaken by everyone and our mother Sylvanas is leading us to the future. Then Sylvanas ditched them and called them losers and told soldiers, but before she did that, she led him to a ton of crimes and then all of that led us to the most recent forsaken heritage quest sign that happened in Dragonfly. The Forsaken had forged a new identity, they got rid of the biggest threat they had in their vicinity, which is the Scarlet Crusade, and they had technically proclaimed that they are the new Lord Run. Technically, this is the case, as most of the Forsaken really are former Lord of the citizens, but with the name Forsaken and living in the literal sewers of the ruins of a city that was destroyed like a dozen times, it isn't exactly something that gives you much legitimacy or something that gets others to recognize you as a serious nation in itself. Hence, a lot of the humans had seen them throughout these years as just abominations and someone that has taken over their former kingdom and someone that should soon be purged. Well, with this new Lord and identity, the Undead Lord Ron, that has definitely changed and the Heritage Questline is just the start, it is very likely that we are going to be getting a revamped Undercity or better yet, no, Undercity by just the capital or city and hopefully by midnight when this star region is ripe for a massive revamp, we are going to get the Undead building a new capital on top of where Lord Ron's once was, seeing that they had cleared it from the plank. Now, all that is, yeah, fine and dandy, the Forsaken are moving on after Savannah's creating a new identity, but we get to a... Uh, little bit of a problem. We got this new nation with a new identity, but literally none of these guys can actually reproduce. Most of the undead are miserable, you can tell that from any NPC conversation, and it's like their entire existence is just a torment, like a punishment in itself. As undead, they actually have no way to reproduce, and despite Savannah leading them to a lot of bad things, the good side to her at least was that she was resurrecting undead through her crimes left and right, despite not exactly obviously being a moral thing, so there were constantly new undead 
dead and that was a thing that was keeping them afloat. However, with the current status quo, the new identity seems kind of like a foolish concept. I mean, sure, new lord or on, but what about 30 years from now when most of the undead either rot away or just fall in the upcoming wars for Azeroth? They're definitely coming. I mean, they're quite literally destined for doom. Well, it really seems like Blizzard may be setting up an unconventional solution to this entire matter as we are going to discover a brand new strain of undead unlike anything we had ever seen before and in fact the first and the only light undead we had encountered by now is currently one of the Forsaken leaders so it really seems like this could be the connecting point in the actual way to go forward. While Shadowlands definitely did a lot of bad things for the lore it changed some things drastically when it comes to undead and not really just change, I mean completely uprooted with no way to backtrack to the previous lore. Before, most of us believe that all undeath is related to the Lich King and ultimately to Maldraxxus whenever he discovered Maldraxxus, but it turns out there is just one single dimension of undeath. Now, more dedicated lore people might remember this guy from like nearly two decades ago, Metal Fellstorm that started this entire thing. This is technically the first alive undead we had seen that has been thousands of years old and he actually had nothing to do with the current Forsaken. He was entirely kept alive through his own magic, which is arcane, seeing that he is a mage. This started showing us originally that there are other ways to create undeath and it's not just a Lich King undeath, they are the only ones that exist. With the Void and the various monstrosities they create, I would wager there are their own ways to create undead and this could probably even be possible with fell magic. However, most interestingly and completely unexpectedly, we had realized that the light is all also able to create undead, which is not just entirely contradictory, but incredibly weird at the same time. The only light undead we know of is Scalia Manatil, and she is the sister of Artist Manatil that was killed directly by Sylvanas Windrunner. Then Anaru literally can pick her personally from the skies and got Anduin Brim to use the light to resurrect her, and we got an entirely different type of undead. I would say an undead wasn't raised through misery to become a mindless pawn or some dude in Northrend, but someone actually given a second chance. You can tell it is different because Scalia Manatil looks so much different than a regular forsaken or a ghoul or some zombie. The interesting thing though, who even knows if these light and dead even have free will or if they're controlled by the light, we just don't know it yet, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now all this leads us to the war within and us discovering the new light undead. What is really interesting is that based on the data one information, this appears to be a race. I mean, loosely worded as a race. Not a one-off chosen character like Kelly Manitel, someone that was given a second chance, but numerous people. Like, you could probably make an army out of these guys. Now, this can go both ways. It could either be a positive thing or it could show us that the light is also quite evil and we might be dealing with a light lich king in terms of this new emperor that we have learned may not exactly be so nice. Personally, based on the data mine information from the war within and the storyline we can actually pray through in the alpha, my guess is that these undead were raised very likely willingly to combat the terrible manpower shortages of this very struggling expedition of the Hell of All Humans. As you may know, by the lore, these Hell of All Humans were sent by the very powerful Light Emperor from the other side of Azeroth to fight in the final battle of the Light and the Void, but they got teleported to this crystal instead. Then, later, Literally, all their capable mages died in the actual crash and they never managed to establish portals so that they can establish a connection with their capital and get actual reinforcements. So for the next 15 years they would continue to be in a constant war between the Rubians and other hostile elements of Kazakar without having much of an infrastructure or a way to regrow their numbers. Sure, I mean these are obviously not undead, these are humans and humans and elves can reproduce but you can't exactly get a new army in 15 years. Seeing that they're incredibly dedicated to the light and the emperor, my guess is that they would allow themselves to be resurrected through the power of the light in order to continue their mission. So literally, this might be like a willing order of light dead knights that would return to continue the light mission and the purpose of the emperor. Again, this is speculation, we still don't know who these guys are exactly, so it could also be negative, it could be punishment, it could be proof that the light is evil and is just raising mindless light undead. However, one thing is definitely certain, and that is that these humans have a method to raise undead like Kelly Manatil and they seem to be able to do it in numbers. Now with this information now leads us back to the Forsaken, I mean if this is a positive thing and we are getting the light army to come to the eastern kingdoms in the next expansion, Midnight, this might be a new way for the Forsaken to expand their numbers and to 
further establish themselves as new Lordran. I'm not saying that now all the Forsaken must convert or they will perish, although who knows, it's possible Kelly Manifel can go crazy, but this could just be a new evolved way for the Forsaken to actually grow. Think of it something like how we still have green orcs, despite the fact that no orcs are actually green, so the green orcs are the OGs, the ones that participated in the first invasion, but all new orcs are returning to their natural skin color, but you can actually play all of them. This could be a new generation of undead and see that they're led by a council, it would really make complete sense with the way the lore is established. As you may know, the undead are currently led by the so-called desolate council with five leaders and this new branch of undead could be created through this method and carry a manatil faction could be a thing and seeing how similar this new model is, it could literally just be a customization that could be a new flavor for the playable characters. However, this entire light undead could also completely spiral out of control and it could be a seriously important part of the future storyline. As like I previously stated, what if the light and dead are not exactly just warriors with a second chance, but they're just mindlessly controlled by the Naru in the evil side of the light and they don't even know it. Keep in mind, while Kaliak has been nothing but nice, you gotta admit, it is definitely suspicious that she was handpicked out of every paladin priest on Azeroth, not even the biggest and the most important and dedicated paladins like Uther or Tyrion were to be resurrected, but Kalia was and it was done on an intervention of an actual Naru. Imagine if she gets a big amount of her followers like a private light army, it could definitely be a pretty advantageous position for the evil side of the light if they do decide to start taking over Azeroth and the speculations are true. Now, all of these are obviously speculations far into the future, we still gotta wait to see what they are going to do with this new light forge undead. However, this might literally be the solution for the Forsaken to further their interests and to continue reproducing because these new light undead might be people that willingly want to join them instead of fallen warriors being resurrected by necromancers without their consent. Thank you for watching, check out the Dreadlord Invasion of Azeroth by clicking on the screen and check out my video on the Cult of Mithras and Roman Mythology by also clicking on the screen as well. See you next time!